Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be showing you how I came up with this super cute cotton candy themed press on set, which was actually a custom order from one of my ASMR friends here on YouTube. And if you didn't know, I do have an ASMR channel and that is where I've been making content for the past few years now. It wasn't until recently that I decided to finally take the plunge and make a second channel dedicated to all things nails and I'm so happy I did because I've been loving making press-ons for the past few years and doing my nails for even longer so it just felt right to finally go ahead and do it so here we are now. So my friend Lori, also known as Lori Latte ASMR here on YouTube, had requested that I make her a cotton candy themed set for her birthday and that the design was completely up to me, which that is so much fun and I love when I get freestyle custom request orders with just a theme in mind because then I can really hone into my creativity and design a set that I think would look best for that specific customer. So that's exactly what I did for Lori and I know her pretty well so I know what she likes and the types of style of nails that she goes for. She's also been a longtime customer of mine so I feel like I have what she likes down to a T so this was a really easy and fun set for me to make for her. So I wanted to stick with the traditional pink and blue cotton candy color palette. When I originally was working on this design, I was going to throw in some purple, but I ultimately decided just to stick with the classic pink and blue, and I'm really glad that I did because I don't think it could have turned out any cuter. So Lori did select her shape and length as well, I forgot to mention that. So she gave me the cotton candy theme and her shape and length and her sizes, of course, and this is the medium almond that I have in my shop, which... I will say is probably one of my most popular shape and lengths along with short almond so everyone's loving the almond lately and I do as well that is my personal favorite too. By the way I did go ahead and speed up these clips as well as some other ones throughout the video just so we're not here all day. When it comes to my painting process I can definitely take quite a while just because I like to make everything as clean and smooth as I possibly can. So as far as the color palette goes I wanted it to be a symmetrical design and I wanted it to be the same design on both hands but I wanted the colors reversed so all the colors you see here are just swapped with the opposite on the other hand and I think that's a really fun way to keep the design just different enough without it being too different. So that was my plan going into this set. I know that Lori really likes her charms and 3D elements on her nails as well, especially knowing that she's an ASMR creator. So I wanted to go in with as many of those as I possibly could for her. I did also want to sculpt a 3D cartoon looking cotton candy element onto the nails as well and I'm very happy with how that turned out. I think it looks so cute and really added to the overall cotton candy theme. So. That was a lot of fun to sculpt that myself and put it on the set. So to make the cotton candy, I use this product from Born Pretty. It is their non-stick hand extension nail gel glue. And essentially it's just a moldable gel that you can use for 3D elements. Um, you can even use this to attach nail tips to your nails. There's many different things you can do with this gel, so it's a very versatile product, but I particularly like it for sculpting. I just scooped out as much as I thought I would need for the little cotton candy, and then I pulled out my mixing palette and just rolled that gel into a little ball and then kind of tapered it a little bit with my fingers to make the molding and sculpting process a little bit easier. So then I just set it on the nail and this process is just a lot of 
working with it and making sure that you get the shape exactly how you want it and these little silicone tools make working with the 3d sculpting gel so much easier i also keep a little dappen dish with alcohol in it because that also helps you work with the product so i will dip into there occasionally when i feel like i need it but now it's just working with the gel, sculpting it, and like I said, I was going for a cartoon cotton candy kind of look. So I wanted it to be kind of bubbly looking and just really cartoony. That's, that's the best way I could put it. Um, it's hard to explain this process because it's more so something you kind of just have to see and kind of just play with and make sure it looks how you want it to look. And once I'm happy with it, I pop that in the lamp to cure. And then I can get started on the second part of the cotton candy, which is like the little paper holder that cotton candy would sit on if you were to get it at a carnival or a fair or whatever. So to do that, I just took a little bit of product and rolled it out into a longer snake shape. And then back in high school, I took every art class you could ever imagine, and one of them was a clay working class. So I learned a technique where if you want your clay to taper, you apply more pressure on one end of the snake shape, and then it will taper down. And that's the look I was going for. I wanted a more like tapered cone shape. So I did a few of these just to prepare myself because I wasn't sure how long I was going to need it to be so I just wanted a few different options so it was ready to go once the cotton candy was done curing. So I just went ahead and popped that on to the cotton candy and I tidied it up and made sure it looked how I wanted it to before curing. But we will come back to this nail a little later when I'm ready to paint it. For now, we will work on the rest of the nails and these are the charms I will need. I just pulled them out so they were ready to go and it made my workspace a little more tidy, especially while filming. So this McCart rhinestone glue is my holy grail. It is one of my all-time favorite rhinestone glues. It's pretty much the only one I use aside from using builder gel here and there, but this glue is amazing, so I highly recommend it. I have so many bows in my charm collection, and I thought these iridescent ones would be perfect for this set. So I pulled out the blue and pink ones for it and put it on the thumb and pinky nail. And since I will be using chunkier sequins on this nail, I wanted to have a thicker base for the sequins to really submerge into and not protrude on the nail and have it be all lumpy and bumpy. So I'm going in with a builder gel. I'm putting a nice layer on the nail and also going around those charms to add some extra protection to them and really lock those in place even though the rhinestone glue does a great job of that. This is the same technique that I use for thinner sequins when working with them on the nails. Um, I normally will do this with just a regular base gel but since these are thicker sequins I'm using a builder gel so it's the same exact method and technique for both. And then once these are on, I will take just a little bit more builder gel and put a little dollop over those sequins and then it will self level and it'll be a nice smooth surface once it's curing.
All right, so moving on to the next two nails. They both have a French tip, so I need to put a few drops of each color onto a mixing palette. And then putting a little extra so I have it handy for when I need to work on painting the cotton candy we molded earlier. And the way that I personally do my French tips is a way I've done it ever since I started and it's my favorite method. I've tried other ones and I just don't like how they turn out quite as much as this one. So what I do is I will draw a dot to where I want the top of the smile line to be and then from there I will vertically draw a line as centered as I can possibly get it up the nail tip. And that'll act as my guide for where I can then start drawing the arches on either side of the center of the nail. And I just freehand my arches. I don't do any other method. This just seems to be the easiest for me and I always like how it turns out. And if I were to make a mistake, it's a very easy one to clean up with a brush. So this is just the method I've always done. I know there are so many different methods for doing French tips and some are easier than others, but for me, this is what works and this is what I stick with. Okay, so now it's time to paint the cotton candy, and I am doing that with a detailed brush, which, by the way, these brushes are amazing. They came in a set of, I believe, six or five, one of the two, and they are actually detail brushes for model painting, and I got them at Hobby Lobby. They are excellent for nail art because they are all very precise and detailed, so... If you are looking for good brushes, definitely check out the model paint brushes because they work beautifully. And I'm just doing a very even thin coat of that cotton candy pink for the first layer and then I will go in with the glitter we used with the French tip nail to add some sparkle to the cotton candy. And then to clean up any of the polish that got on the blue part of the nail, I just cleaned off my brush and took some alcohol to remove that before curing. So while that is curing, I'm going to start placing the charms and rhinestones on the French tip nails. And I had these really cute sparkly candy charms in my collection and they happened to be pink and blue so I thought that this was the perfect set to use them on. And I'm just placing these charms on an angle and opposite of each other so for example this nail is going to be upward and to the right and then the next nail is going to be angled upward and to the left just to kind of break it up a bit. And then when I'm placing charms like this I like to match it up with the finished hand just to make sure that everything is at the same level. And for the finishing touch on this nail before we go in with top coat, I am taking these tiny iridescent rhinestones and 
spacing them out a bit down the rest of the French tip here. I thought that they kind of reminded me of candy just because of the coloring in them and I thought it would just add a little extra pizzazz to the French tips. back to the cotton candy so here is the jelly glitter that I am putting over that pink layer we did earlier like I said I just wanted to add some sparkle to this I have some sparkle on the blue cotton candy on the other hand as well so I just thought that that would kind of give the appearance of the sugar crystals on cotton candy so I thought that would be really cute and then after I do all of that, I'm going to take some white gel and paint the little holder part of the cotton candy. The part that would be like the paper cone that your cotton candy gets attached to. So I wanted the base to be more white than the actual uh, molding gel was just because I tried painting the stripes on just the molding gel and it, it wasn't standing out. So. I added the white to really make the pink and blue stripes pop on there. To finish off the detail work, I am taking another one of those model paintbrushes I was talking about earlier. This one is much more thin and precise and super tiny. It's one of my favorite detail brushes I have for this kind of precise work. It, it works amazing. And back to that technique I showed you earlier with the chunkier star sequins, I'm putting some more of those on this nail here. So I'm doing that same technique with the builder gel and just putting it around the entire cotton candy piece to make sure everything is smooth and even. So to finish off these nails, I am taking the Beatles No Wipe Top Coat and doing a nice even layer on all of the nails. This is actually my favorite No Wipe Top Coat to use on my press-on sets because I really like the viscosity of this. It's not too thick and it's not too thin and runny, so I just feel like it's a good consistency for what I like in a top coat. Here is the completed set of nails. I absolutely love how they turned out. I think they are so cute and I know that Lori is going to love these nails because they are completely her style. I hope that you all enjoyed today's work with me video and please like and subscribe for more content just like this. I want to thank everyone for watching and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye everyone!